Hey guys, Chip here, and today I want to go over a brand new utility tool that Anthony and I have created. It's called Slice It. Basically, it's something I've been thinking about for a long time, and I've been ta talked with Anthony about it, and he said, yeah, he thought he could knock something out pretty quickly. And so that's exactly what we did. So this is this is just a cube, but just to show you how it works really quickly, it's it, it shows itself in the tool menu. It's called Slice It right here. And you just basically, let's, let's go ahead and turn on our wireframe so we can see what's going on right there so you can see the wireframe i'm going to go ahead and say number of slices 10. we're in object mode right here we slice it and you see we just we did you know 10 that way so now if i actually stretch it out we do like this and let me uh stretch it out and we'll do across the y this time 10 and you'll see that we only get four and the reason for that is because this actual cube doesn't have the proper scale so if i if i undo this and control a apply a proper scale to it right then go back into here and say slice it. I'm going to get the right number right there. So that's a little bit about how it works. And let me show you why you might want to use this, right? So let's go in here. We're going to add a modifier, like a bevel modifier. We'll put eight on there. So we got a nice, you know, nice surface there. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go add a uh, shift a mesh. Let's just do a, a, a cylinder and let's uh, move it over. Let's move it over, over and up, something like this and scale it a little bigger. And then we'll, you know, use under edit. We'll use the bull tool difference and then i'm gonna come back in here and i'm gonna add one more modifier which is a mirror modifier so i'm gonna put it over here on this side on the y side so we put y y bisect y and then we have why well, that now notice that without bisect it won't work bisect's gonna give us this 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 area right in here this this line in here so so this is our our object and let's just go ahead and say apply all of that so now it's all applied now i can go in here and under the tool menu i can say i want to do a hundred slices in here and say slice it and when i slice it i get this weird thing going on like this and if i if i undo that tab into it i'll see that i've got this selection i hit a tab back out and then say slice it and i'm going to get it correct so just so you know it's looking at the selected faces inside of this object when it's trying to figure out what the slice is so just keep that in mind okay now i want to undo that and i want to show you kind of what, what the advantage of this is so let's first say that we want to bend this so i'm going to say shift a and i'm going to add a curve and we'll use a circle curve right there's a circle and i'm going to scale it up bigger something like this okay and then i'm going to rotate it r y 90. so it looks like that so that's that's how i'm going to do that so now i'm going to take this object and i'll add a curve modifier to it and i'm going to select this curve to it and then I'll come over here and I'm going to deform axis is going to be the Y. So it comes like this. So notice it's not very smooth. I want this to, to track very carefully this spline, right? That's, that's kind of the goal. So how do we do that? A couple things we could do is one is we could add a subdivision surface modifier. So let's do that. And that obviously is not what we want, but we want it on simple. And let's just start adding four or five. So we're now up to a million triangles and yet we still have plenty of artifacts. So that doesn't work. Oh, actually, let's put it up in here. And you'll see the same thing but we still have lots of artifacts this stuff is all weirded out and all that so subdivision surface is not going to work for for us another way of doing it would be to say well let's just go ahead and use a remesh modifier and we'll go into sharp and uh, let's put this above this as well so we can get the curve and it curves a little bit but as we start adding more and more details to it we're going to see that you know at some point you know if we want to get smooth enough we're going to have a again a ton of you know, there's like 45,000 faces and not to mention there's starting to be a little bit, you know, you can kind of see there's a little bit of, uh, of artifacting going on in these areas on that. So that doesn't really work as well either. And so that's really kind of why you want to just kind of go in here and say, slice it, you know, and then you're going to get a very, a perfect example of how this thing should work. By the way, there's a little bit of fastening going on and you can affect that by adjusting the curve. So if we go into the curve properties and we say instead of 12, let's do 64, you'll see that that gets rid of that fastening quite nicely. Let's go ahead and turn off wireframe. You'll see what I'm talking about. And this is a maybe shade auto smooth on it too. Now this fastening was part of the cylinder, by the way. That was part of the cylinder that we put in there. We didn't add enough faces in there. But anyway, just give you an idea how that works. So that's really the product. It's called Slice It. You can get it at Blender Market. You can certainly get it free at our Discord. And you can also get it free on my Patreon. So, And I think we're going to be adding some other stuff to it. So uh, just let you know. But anyway, for now, 
It's a very simple little product. You can, you know, slice, continue slice X, Y, Z. It'll slice selected polygons in edit mode or it'll slice the whole object in object mode. So hope you enjoy it and uh, see you online. Bye.